Tati Beauty has a strange tab at the bottom of their website, and fans are concerned about their personal data. Before I get into the tea, I just want to put out a disclaimer. Please do not send any hate to Tati Beauty or anyone else involved in this story. This video is simply meant to report on the news and give some insight on the situation. Now let's get into the tea. On January 6th, a Reddit user noticed something strange on the Tati Beauty website. The user said, I started looking around the website and noticed at the bottom of the page, do not sell my personal information. I then clicked the link and found that Tati has given residents of the EU and Cali the option of filling privacy requests due to their respective laws. I know that most companies do sell our information to make extra money. However, I find it weird Tati would just broadcast that she's selling her consumers data. I have not seen a page like like this on any other website. Naturally, after seeing it, I searched this subreddit and found nothing. Is this normal? How do we feel about this? I'm hoping maybe somebody here knows something I don't, because my immediate reaction was not positive. Do only residents of California and the EU deserve privacy? Would love to hear what you all think. However, several people said Tati Beauty was complying with laws in California and the European Union. I live in Europe, and because of the GDPR law, she has to do this if she want to sell her products within the EU market. I haven't seen it being written like that before, but I've seen similar things on other non-makeup related websites. This, I'm a web developer, and websites serving the EU are required by law to have an option like this on their website. Added it to a lot of sites a few years ago. This is because of a new law in California. Every single company now has to write this, and if you notice, all of the apps you were on made you agree to new privacy statements in the last week or so. One user said the tabs label didn't mean Tati Beauty was selling customer information. This doesn't mean that they are selling it, but websites have to legally give information about how their data is being used if requested in the EU, and now California. That being said, 99% of websites are making money off your data, so if Tati Beauty is, it's one in a billion. This is a weird way to label that tab though, and other users pointed out that other sites use that same labeling. Literally go to walmart.com and scroll to the bottom. They also have a do not sell my personal information tab. So does Target. So does Nordstrom. And so do many other online retailers. Stop trying to make this about Tati when it's really just about a new California law. So, what is this new California law that's forcing companies to change their privacy policies and their websites? The new law under the California Consumer Privacy Act, which took effect on January 1st, gives California residents the right to see the data companies are collecting on them. California residents also have the right to opt out of having their data sold. Additionally, businesses cannot sell personal data from children under 16. With the new law coming into effect, many companies based in the U.S. or that do business in the U.S. have been changing their privacy policies and updating their websites to make it easy for California residents to either see the data collected from them or to opt out of their data being sold. This law comes on the heels of the General Data Protection Regulation in the European Union, which regulates how businesses collect data and gives consumers the ability to consent to being a part of their databases or mailing lists. That seems to be the end of the situation for now. So, what's the big issue? How companies sell your information and how you can protect yourself. How do these companies get your data in the first place? Most people didn't really think about how their online data was being used until the Facebook Cambridge Analytica scandal from 2018. The FTC opened an investigation into how Cambridge Analytica, a voting profile company, accessed the user data from roughly 50 million Facebook users. Here's a quick summary of the scandal as it involves Facebook from The Atlantic. In June 2014, a researcher named Alexander Kogan developed a personality quiz app for Facebook. It was heavily influenced by a similar personality quiz app made by the Psychometrics Center, a Cambridge University laboratory where Kogan worked. About 270,000 people installed Kogan's app on their Facebook account, but, as with any Facebook developer at the time, Kogan could access data about those users or their friends. And when Kogan's app asked for that data, it saved that information into a private database instead of immediately deleting it. Kogan provided that private database containing information from about 50 million Facebook users to the voter profiling company Cambridge Analytica. Cambridge Analytica used it to make 30 million psychographic profiles 
details about voters. But that's not the only way companies can collect data on you. A lot of websites use cookies to collect information on you and your habits. YouTuber and former software engineer Jarvis Johnson explained how companies use cookies to access your online behavior. So when you visit most websites in most web browsers, you're given this thing called a cookie. The cookie is meant to make your website experience a little sweeter. It's for holding on to information about your history with the website. Think of these cookies as little ID cards that have your website preferences on them. Things like whether or not you're logged in or what items are in your shopping cart. So if you're the Chewy dog toy company and you want to advertise Chewy dog toys or whatever, you don't go to a website directly. You talk to something called an ad network, who's basically the middleman between you and the websites that are showing your ads. Ad networks know your activity and history on different websites because they sell the ads for those websites. And since they know your online behavior, the networks can put together robust profiles on you and basically anyone else who uses the internet. These networks can act as data brokers, buying and selling your information. And most of the time, you've unknowingly given consent for these companies to have access to your data. It doesn't stop at websites. DMVs across the country sell the data they collect from people applying for a license or registering a vehicle, and they make tens of millions of dollars doing it. So you can see, it's easy for companies to access and sell your data, and you've probably unknowingly given them permission to do so. If you're concerned about your information being sold, how can you protect yourself? There are a few things you can do. You can stop taking surveys. That's one way consumers hand over their personal data to be resold. Privacy consultant Bob Gelman says, never answer a consumer survey. As a general rule, pay careful attention when asked for any personal information by anyone, and don't disclose anything unless you know how it's going to be used. You can also directly opt out of data broker lists. The biggest marketing data companies give users the ability to place their names on suppression lists designed to stop their data from being shared. To do this, users must sometimes provide proof of their identity, such as a photo of their driver's license. Be careful with how you share your financial data, and make sure to read your bank's privacy policy to understand how they can share your information. Banks are allowed to share data about their customers, including account balances and names of the stores where they shop, but they are also required to allow any customer to opt out of data sharing. Pam Dixon, executive director of the World Privacy Forum, recommends using digital wallets like Apple Pay and PayPal and using different forms of payment to hide your transaction patterns. Finally, if you have a child who is a student or you are a student, you should take steps to protect your data. A federal law allows schools to give out directory information about K-12 and college students, including name, address, phone number, dates of attendance, subject majors, and degrees. The same law, Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, or or FERPA, gives parents and kids the right to prevent the disclosure of this information. To find your school's opt-out form, you can search the internet for FERPA and the name of your school. This situation isn't really about Tati Beauty. Tati Beauty is simply complying with both the new California law and the existing European Union law. And even though the Privacy Act tab is labeled in a strange way, it does seem to be the industry standard. Walmart and Target have named their tabs the same thing. With all that being said, it's important for consumers to know how their data is being used and how they can take control of their information. What do you think about this story? Are you concerned about companies selling data? Let me know in the comments below.